Hey everyone, it's Robin, R Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you the crafty goodness that I've been up to in the past week. I had a custom order for some Christmas cards or holiday cards using the full-on fabric that I've just started to do recently with the beautiful, fun cardinal fabric and a thread. I went with a green flamingo on all of them for the Christmas season. And I thought since the cardinals are red and the white birch trees, that it would be really fun to use this striped lining. A couple of them are going this way, as you can see, and the rest are going that way. To get 10 of them, I needed to use some scraps that were already cut once, so I had to cut them in a different direction. But they're going out to individual people, so I think it's perfectly fine. It just kind of changes the overall look of the picture. But I just thought that the red and white looks so nice with it and so fresh and clean that I couldn't put something like snowflakes and green and stuff like that on it. It just needed to be this. So I had to fussy cut to get the cardinal and I didn't want to put them in the center all the time. I thought that was just kind of dull. I wanted to offset them. because Sometimes they say when I'm watching different people that are doing actual like art when they're painting and drawing and sketching and all that fun stuff that I can't do. They like to off-center things. They says it gives it more life to it, more character. Plus, I wanted to also get in the birch branches in some of them. So things like this that I could get almost in the center. I mean, he's really out there, wings spread and everything like that. So he needed to fill up the card. But I thought this one would be nice just kind of hanging off to the side. You get some of that extra bit of branch in there, some more of the birch trees. I think this ruffly guy is one of my favorites. He just has that ruffled up, wind blown, been out traveling and flying through the winter and stuff. So I was able to get one of each type of cardinal. So this set of 10 cards has a nice little variety to it. I think those would be really fun to send out to friends and family and also to be the recipient and receiving those. Now that's a Christmas card that I wouldn't throw away after Christmas. I like to keep certain special ones. There are a lot of just basic Christmas cards that people purchase in the bulk sets and everything. And I've done that many times myself. And it's great when you're gonna be sending out 50 or 100 cards or something, but if you're only gonna send out 10, 12, 20 of them, it's nice to have something really special that people might want to keep afterwards. Now, if you watch Friday's tutorial, you've already seen all of these where I made the little pillowcase, the little pillow insert, and we made pillowcases to go over it. And they could be used for little stuffed animals and dolls and whatnot, but I thought that'd be a fun way to use as a pin cushion. And then for each holiday, you can go ahead and change out the fabric here to change out your pillowcase. Then it kind of refreshes up your craft space. It's the same thing. You only have to have one pin cushion. So if you don't want to have a bunch, you don't want to store a bunch, you can just change out these pillowcases. And when they're done, you know, they're really nice and flat and store them in an envelope or something in a desk drawer and they'll be ready for whenever you're in the mood to change it. I really like the apple fabric, but this little goofy turkey dude, something about it being on that green background, because let's face it, the turkeys aren't all that, they're not all that special, but I don't know, just that green background and the orange cuff, I think this one is my favorite right now. Ask me again in a few days and I might change my mind. A huge thank you to everyone that watched the live stream this week or who has watched the replay or will watch it later on this week. We were working on the spool pin cushions. During the live stream, I showed my progression from, ew, still not better. Working on it, getting there. And then the one I made during the live was the best out of the bunch. I think I could still do a little bit better, 
But I've also decided that while this is really cute, maybe it's not for me. I would like this if it were just a regular old scrappy pin cushion like this. And since I cut out a bunch of scraps, I have plenty of them to sew together here. So I've got a lot of strips in the certain color families. So I think I will just go ahead and make some like this for the shop and use various colors on the end. So this is green, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll put black on the end or I've, I do have a bunch of the brown cut out already, all of the neutrals. So I guess it would make sense to go ahead and use that. And then just after they're sewn, trim them up this way. So it's just a small pin cushion. And then you could choose your favorite color from the shop. And I think it would be a fun little stocking stuffer or tuck-in gift. And it's just the right size. It's about three by four ish ish. And I think it'd be the right size for a take along project. So when you're going to class or you're going on retreats, or if you like to have, maybe you do like EPP and stuff. So you want to have a little pin cushion in each of your project bags or baskets or however you keep your projects. So I think just a little bit like that, just a small little pin cushion would be fun. So I'm not going to worry about doing the spool, but I do love the zipper pouch that I made. So it's a nice big guy. This is going to be in the shop by the time you see this Whip It Wednesday. So I just took the spool and instead of sewing them together like this, I took two different groupings of my pink fabric and I put one here and one there. And I even have different colors on my neutrals for the top and bottom of the spool. Did a little feather stitch around it, a little wave stitch here, and I turned it into this nice large pouch. Now this one's a little subtle because it's a light gray and it's a creamy background uh, on the top and bottom of the spools so it doesn't pop as much but depending on the fabric I use for the pouch I'll make a few of these also I, I've cut enough fabric for three to five of each color so when you get two if I can have this one has two different ones but I could put the same pink here and same on the back I was thinking about making some coin pouches and stuff like that so I will use it up but I did think this is a really cute project and it's probably going to work out really well for many of you, but it's taken me five times to even get to this point and I don't think that it's within my enjoyment. Now, I can make these and I can keep improving and then I can have them like that and put them in the shop or give them to friends and stuff, but I wanna also enjoy what I'm making and I don't think this one brought me that much joy. Great pattern. If you check out the blog post, I'll go ahead and link it again down below here. So if you check out the blog post where I found this pattern, hers looks great. So she has a really great technique and her, her tutorial for it was perfect. It just didn't translate to my brain and my sewing machine. But I think they're really fun. These are going to be turned into cat toys for the cats. This one I will keep for myself for just something fun to have in the craft room or to go ahead and use it for pins. Like, it, whoops, if I'm sitting out in the living room or if I'm just sitting here doing some hand stitching, like if I'm going through to close all of these up, the cats are gonna get sewn across. I'm not doing no hand stitching for those. But I do have random hand stitching projects that I do, so it would be nice to have a spot to put the pin. So you might even see this in some upcoming videos if I need to rest my pin somewhere. I also showed this fun Halloween card that I received from one of you amazing people. The person that sent it to me was in the live stream, so I went ahead and showed it off there too. And it's really fun. It's like the way I make my scrappy cards with the nice fun scraps you just stitch across. She has started filling her card up completely and I love that look. So I'm gonna go ahead and borrow steal that from her instead of having the frame going around it. Because when I received my first scrappy card many years ago, it had a white space around it. So they had just had the scrappy bit smaller. So I figured, okay, I like that. I really love the look of it, so I'll keep doing it. But then when I received these, I'm like, no, I really love the look of them being filled up like that. And I love that these are larger bits so you can see all the different characters and designs. And it's just fun to have a Halloween card on orange cardstock. It also came in an orange envelope. Now what I thought was really fun too is on top of the envelope on the back flap, she took some scrapbooking paper or something like that and it is glued, double stick tape down or whatever. So you have your regular envelope here, but then she added this fun Halloween part. So I just think it's great when it, things come like that in the mail and you just have that little extra bit. So even if you bought a store-bought card, 
if you want to jazz it up just a little bit, you can use some heat and bond or double stick tape and you can put paper on here or fabric on here. So with the heat and bond, you can do it with the fabric and I think that would just be really fun. And then you don't have to worry about stitching or anything like that or, or making anything scrappy. You can just use one whole piece and just jazz it up a little. I had an order for a bowl cozy. I love this green fabric. I love the color of the screen. And it just with the light and the dark, it just kind of has that nice look to it. And then I use this coral version on the other side. It's the same fabric. It's got the dark and the lighter as the green. So I thought it was a nice combo. So if they want to use it and look at the coral while they're eating, they're good. And if they want to look at the green while they're eating, I think that's even better. I always put my favorite color, my favorite fabric at the part where the bowl is sitting in so that I can look at it while I'm eating my soup. I also finished the last two mug rugs from the falling leaves that we did during a, well, I think we did it during a live stream. I really wanted to hand stitch down the binding and I wanted to have that nice clean look with no extra stitches on the front. So I really wanted that nice clean look of hand stitching the binding down to have that nice look. I didn't want the extra stitches anywhere. I wanted this to be the focus and everything, but it's been sitting over there in a basket since we did that live stream and it's been several weeks, I'm pretty sure. So I thought, you know what? Better done than just sitting there doing nothing. So I went ahead and I used the feather stitch that I used on here. So that worked out really well. I figure it matches nicely. And then on the back, it stayed pretty much on the binding all the way around. So that was great. I did the glue method where you take little dots of Elmer school glue, bring over the binding, hit it up with your iron, get it nice and hot. And then after it cools down, you can go ahead and take it over and sew. And it just holds everything down nicely. And I stitched it from the front. So I gotta tell you, that's the first time it's really worked out that well for me. So I'm a firm believer in the glue technique. Same thing with this one. Now this one has straight line stitching, so it's a little different. So I'm just gonna pretend like it's a good frame and an accent going around the side. And then it's the same thing on the back. So these two are going into the shop with the other two. So that's it for me this week. I hope you enjoyed my little Whip It Wednesday video. I'd love to hear what you guys are working on this week. So your code word for this week is finished. So you can let me know what you finished this week or however you want to use that in your comment. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for looking at my projects. Thanks for watching my videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.